Hello, welcome. Okay. Now, I know last time we spoke, I said I would completely complete all the cycle parts, put it all together in one good video so there'd be no messing around. It turns out that that was a lie. Okay, I've come to a sort of point where I'm ready, I'm right ready right now to put some paint on. But because I've done quite a bit, I thought we'll draw a little line here. So I'll make a video because I've done some testing with paint finishes as well. So I'm going to show you that. Now all this has been done over the last two or three weeks, doing little bits here and there whilst working around work and everything else so it may all seem a bit disjointed and not make much sense so no different from usual really so there might be some things repeated or but hopefully it will try and stitch together as some kind of story of preparing these cycle parts for finishing so let's have a look through it and i'll show you what i have done with some weird bonus content. But never mind. See you in a bit. Let's have a look at the challenge then. So the bike is pretty much sorted. And these are the cycle parts I have. Let's see, got quite a damaged tank. Dense, dense, dense. Not too bad otherwise. A uh, little dent. No idea how that happened. So fairly solid. Fairly good. We'll try and do something with it. That front mud guard, that was £32, I think. But that's funny enough, that's brand new. Absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. Though, of course, we have to do something with it to make it match everything else. Rear mud guard had a small dent, which you can just feel, but it won't affect what we're doing. And is otherwise, apart from being scratched up, is otherwise all good. Left hand side panel, obviously bit damaged. Big dent in the top is that one's main malfunction. And right hand side panel, actually not too bad. We've got a little dent there. You can just see the back of it there. Look. So all in all, that is what's going to give the bike its character. So not a lot to lose. Because it's pretty rough. <laughs> Obviously trying to disguise the bike when they stole it. Didn't do a great job. Wallies. Now, let's get my sample pieces. So the plan is still to go, all or nothing. And we're gonna go for rusty cycle parts with vintage logos. So all this is gonna get covered up if it doesn't work, then we'll just do something conventional. Like I said, there's not a lot of money tied up at all in these parts. They're easy to replace. I've even got the Halcyon Grey tank. There's plenty of these available. So we're going to go nuts. It's not going to be this finish. It's a more specialised one, which I'll be trying for the first time. Um, epoxy. 
2K coating with a hardener. Just got the fan heater on these letters and they should come off pretty well. There we go. It wasn't too hard, just a bit of heat. They came right off. Now, obviously before I can paint over these, these graphics are raised. You can feel as a lip where these are and they're decals, they're um, stickers, but the paint, the lacquer is over the top, which is why they're it's all very hard wearing. But we're going to get them off the same way. Load of heat. Well, not load of heat, just heat off my fan heater till they're uncomfortable to touch. And then if we just manage to break the seal, this should, some kind of fight, will come off. Let's have a look. Okay, so just the tail end of this sticker. And I've got one of these window scraper tools. Just to try and get under there. Obviously I'm damaging the lacquer, but um, as you can see, this tank is ex extremely damaged anyway. Don't worry about that. There we go, it's gonna need a bit more heat, I think. So let's warm this up some more. I'll keep the heater running, see if we can get this off. There we go. Be getting a bit hot, it's going all stretchy now. Let's turn that off a bit. There we go. And as you can tell, because that lacquer was over the top. We've got quite a ridge now. That's okay because we'll just rub that back. Cool, stealthy. Let's try the big red one. Still pretty hot. One might be a bit trickier because of the shape. Just like that. It's a bit more heat. Getting really hot. Just so you know, I did wash this tank out with soap and water. It's not going to explode. 
we've been there and done that with the meteor, haven't we? But hey, there we go. One D-stickered Classic 350 Reborn tank. Because I know some models come without those graphics, don't they? They just have the Royal Enfield um, badging. And I have got those vintage style decals. We'll have to see. Now, I remember from Coast Rider Scotland, Bruce's video, what it was like to take these off. And I don't think I'll be taking them off because it didn't look much fun. But it'll probably be the same way. Lots of heat, lots of peeling. But I'm going to sand around them and see if we can work like that to start with. Cool. Let me show you a close-up of this tank. Have a look at this. We've got this damage at the back. All up the sides. Dents and scratches to the left side. Got a dent over by the filler here. There's one around the front here somewhere. Yeah, there you go. And in general, scratched all over. There's a little dent there. Dent there. So I'm not too worried about being a bit brutal with this tank. Oh, dent there. Oh, gotta get that sticker off. Do that now. Yeah, pretty mangled. 350 reborn tank. So I don't mind messing around with this at all. Rear mudguard. It's the same, it's got this massive decal down the back. So, uh, coming off. I've been heating it up. Ow! Yeah, I think that's quite do. Again, don't do this on your own bike unless you're ready for the consequences of having two lines in the lacquer. There's a little dent there. It's probably upset the uh, the flow of the sticker a bit, and get some more heat on it.
we go. Well, apart from that little bit, it's giving me trouble. Hang on. Yeah, it's definitely where the dent is that annoyed that. It's only a tiny dent, but it's obviously enough to um, disturb the sticker. There we go, deep stickered. Again, just like the tank, we've got a ridge in the lacquer where the sticker was. That's okay, that's the sand right off. Right, front mud guard. A little trickier this one. Seems horrible to cut into this brand new uh, fender. Put down. Oh dear, oh dear. using the heater to warm the thing up as I go. You can tell when it's not quite warm enough because it doesn't want to come off. Nearly there. Got it. Yes. That's pretty easy. Easier than I thought, really. Again, we've got that sort of unpolished look in the middle. And the ridge where the sticker was. But conceivably, you could probably rub that down with a bit of wet and dry to get rid of the ridge, polish that, and that would all go gloss metallic black. But obviously, don't take my word for that. But I think that would, if you wish, that would go a nice black color all over. Right, side panels. Again, might be able to do the same with that if you rub down that ridge because it looks lacquered underneath. So it must have had the black, then lacquered. Nice and glossy, then the sticker, then another coat of lacquer. Don't come back to me if it goes wrong. Last one. Well done. That didn't take too long. About 20 minutes, half an hour. Probably would have been quicker without uh, having to work around the damage on the tank.
but we've now got a full set of cycle parts. First thing, I'm going to get some sanding done, flat these all down, get some filler on the dents. And let's see where we're at. Here's the results of the first sanding. So I've just given these a blast over with my uh, battery sander. Weirdly, it's come up white, not because the paint is white, because the lacquer is white on top of the black. So I'm gonna rub some of this dust off now. That's why it looks white. And the clean areas are the dents, basically. You can see that's dented. So that really shows up now. Likewise, on the top of this one, those sunken dents, really visible. The front mud guard is new, so the, nothing on there. And if you look at the tank, dent, 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 tiny dent, big dent. The weirdly not as big. As I thought it was. That is dented. And then over on the top here. Dent. Dent. And the back mud guard is pretty good. You can see we've got a little dent there. So I'm just gonna give this white dust clean off. And then pop some filler on these dents. Just try and fill them out. But not too many, so a bit of filler. People hardly use filler anymore. The smell of filler just reminds me of evenings and weekends when it was just normal to have a rusty car and you'd stick some filler on and try all the treatments and sort of vain hope that your British lady and vehicle would hold together for another few months. You try all the treatments and get it as good as possible. But you don't really see rusty cars anymore. Anyone looking at this for great tips and tricks, you've come to the wrong place because um, I'm not a bodywork expert whatsoever. bit like the uh, brass turning room. But hey, we'll fill it over. We'll rub that back. Got a little dent on the top here. Too much stuff on there. That's a dent. I haven't got a proper scraper either, but then um, we'll just work around that. As usual.
be honest, with a distressed finish, it's not going to matter if it's not perfect. But bizarrely, I'm going to try and get it as good as I can. A little dense here. Don't even need much. trick will be to sand a nice curve in it without it making it look all square and whatnot. Right hand side cover is not too bad, two little dents here. Way too much filler on there, but then sands off easy enough. It's okay for a first pass. Quite a bit on this top one. So we'll just fill it over and we'll try and sand it smooth. It'll probably end up a bit misshapen because this is pushed out a bit, but in the grand scheme of things, that's not gonna matter. Out of control. Tiny bit more, just there. I think that's more than enough for a first pass. We'll sand that back, see what we're left with. Oh, small dent there. Okay. Right. Leave that dry, see what we got. Just before we go to town with the air. Uh, sanding and prep. If you remember the meteor, which I'll show you now, just for a bit of detail, we made a few holes in it. Now, if you saw that series, I'm sure you're flinching already. But yes, I'm gonna add some more detail, just with a chain of holes around this mudguard. Not too big. I swear, it'll all make sense in the end. Just to add to that sort of oldie, oldie world look, where things are full of holes, I assume. But you know, that's what I want. It's one of those brilliant things I wish I'd bought years ago. It's just a sliding block. 
but it's a scribe tool and it's very handy because you can put it up against things and mark them off. Just be careful to miss these um, strengthening ribs under here. But I think I'm going to do 100 millimeter centers. And that should miss them all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven little holes. Got to make them a bit bigger. Right, this swaging tool works by going through the 10 millimeter hole and forcing it to make that shape. So just got to widen these out to 10 mil. We we'll use the tool. Here we go. Nice little set of holes. Let's just file these smooth now. Right, so there's the before, not before the holes, but before the swaging. And now we'll use the tool and see how much we can mess it up. Here we go. Okay, so put a bit of grease on that. Bolt goes through the top die, top die falls off. No, that goes in the hole. And then the cup goes underneath. So obviously we've got a gap there. And when we tighten it, that gap is going to disappear. It doesn't take too much force. It's only quite thin metal at the end of the day. So that's pulled down to the body now. Let's 
take it out and see what we got. Not a disaster. I, hope. I expect it will damage the paintwork, but that's no problem. because I've just damaged the gloss paint, which I expected. Let me go and sand that off and I'll show you what. That's really like, so stay there. Okay, that probably doesn't make it any clearer. This looks like some weird Ordnance Survey relief map now. But you can see the radius on that hole now. montage. Sand it up. Yep, you got it. The front is not immune either. Now these two end holes hold the stays for the mud guard, but I know that they're gonna to have to either move or get longer. So I'm gonna repurpose these holes as these uh, detailing holes. Wager in. It out. I'll do the other side, we'll sand it up and have a look at the results of the whole thing. Here's the results from the first coat of filler. It's got some unusual patterns around the holes just because of the way the sander catches the metal. Check it out. So these dents are filled up quite nicely. As usual with fillers, always a little more to do. Just a little more, just there. The side panels came out pretty good. That was that small dent. This was the one that was dented a lot. As you can see from these dark areas, that's where it's still hollow after the first rough sanding. So just a little bit of filler. Just put another coat over there and then we'll fine sand it properly. But 
5% there. Maybe a little more. Probably a badge going here anyway, you never see it, but may as well try and get it get it half right. I think that was pretty much it. Oh yeah, I think I went a bit too deep on that dent there when I sanded it. I didn't put enough filler in it. Just put a bit more in. I haven't got proper, I made these out of some old signs. I've got a bit stiff, but uh, that's okay. Let's say it's okay. Oops. side was fine. Looks quite nice without the badges. Just a bit more on this side panel. Just to fill that out. So glad you don't have to repair cars like this anymore. Where am I so far? Okay, so I've been working a bit and popping in and out of the uh, workshop. I've moved the outside part of the workshop because I don't want all this dust in the uh, in the nice side. And I think I'm done with the sanding. Not that that's bad. Got my battery sander. Again, what looks like white isn't white as such it's just uh, the lacquer on top of the black paint so it's still we're going to wipe this off now but they still look black just the lacquer is now clouded filling is quite straightforward these are all nice and smoothed off now all these little dents side panel is nice and smooth you can see it's Dents are still there on the inside. There's a little dent on that one. Some of the bullet holes are all sanded. Front and rear. going to do now is obviously because we've got this exposed filler we're just going to pop some primer just to seal this over I won't prime the whole thing because this is um, a perfectly good surface for painting there we go might be smoother than when it left the factory actually Sanding dust, terrible for your skin. Should have put gloves on. Still, all done now, I would hope. Fair play, it is nice thick paint on these. It's had quite a brutal sanding, but it hasn't burnt through to the metal anyway. Lots of nice thick paint on these. It's 
So I'm going to wipe these off. Let's put some Sandra, some uh, primer on these. That's sandy on the brain now. This can might be a bit old, but um, as long as it covers it up. Oh, it smells good. Mm. Primer is dry and I've just flattened it down. It actually covered pretty well. So all that fill is sealed in now. And the whole thing is pretty smooth, smooth as I need it anyway. And just in case you've forgotten or just in denial, this isn't going to be a smart finish paint job. I absolutely do want it to have an old rusty vintage look. Just like you and I should put some pictures up. And if I remember when I went to the bike show, I saw a few really old bikes there. And um, I just really liked the way it looked when they were sort of old and old and rotten. Which might sound weird con considering how much effort we've gone to on the rest of the bike to make it look so amazing. But I just think the, uh, the difference, the juxtaposition between the shiny and what these are going to look like will really make it, especially with the little holes. Now I've done some samples before with um, sort of domestic paint from a DIY shop that gives that finish. But I found a supplier of a more professional finish. This kit is from rustypaint.com. So the clue is definitely in the name. They sent this lovely sticker. I don't think that'll be on there, but um, I do like the sticker. So we'll see what happens with that. And this is a much more professional system geared for automotive painting. So if I show you some of the stuff from their website, people usually use it for cars and decorating and you can get all sorts of um, effects. And it's designed as, as a final level solution, so you don't cover it up with anything, you don't lacquer it over, you don't oil it. And it's a, it's a two-part paint system. So we've got a paint, a thick paint that's full of, I assume, iron particles, which are gonna rust. It's a hardener, so it's a two-part system and the paint will harden as a hard coat. And then we've got what I presume are acid crystals, the activator, which you mix with water in the spray bottle and spray that on the paint and that will rust it all. That will apparently rust it. Have you even thrown it in a Natty little key ring. So that's rustypaint.com. They haven't sponsored this, so I've paid for it all. So we'll see how it goes. Obviously, that's quite a big commitment. Something I've never tried before. So we're going to try a sample first. And expeditiously, I've got this. Now this is a guitar kit, which I did about 10 years ago. So it wasn't built, it just came as parts and you sort of screw it together and it comes plain. So this is a plain maple capped Les Paul copy. It's a copy of a Gibson Les Paul basically and the construction is maple cap. 
and a solid wood back. On a proper Gibson Lebs Paul, that would be one piece of mahogany without joins. But this is just, um, that would have been an Eastern hardwood. It's very heavy. So it is hardwood. But you know, it's just, it's just a Chinese kit. So, it, you know, it's been made with a not as expensive wood. So it has got a bit of flame in it. Which you'd pay about a quarter of a million for. That was a real 1959 Les Paul. So it came completely bare. Although it has got a slight lacquer on the top to seal it, which helps us because we're going to paint this with the rusty paint. And we're going to make a rusty guitar. I'm going to do the headstock as well. So just going to unscrew a few bits, take this guitar to bits, and make a vintage bike themed Les Paul rusty guitar. And I've got a few Royal Enfield graphics as well. So we might, um, might bring a bit of that into it. Interesting. Anyway, let's take this to bits, put a bit of paint on this, make it rusty, learn how to use this paint. And if it goes well, we'll be doing it on there. And if it doesn't go well, then I don't know what I'll do. Right, guitar to bits. body we'll paint the top there's those pickups there's magnets with a coil wire on it's all there and we'll paint the top as well headstock the face just for a laugh I'll drop these tuners out here's our mixed up paint Very strange, gloopy gravy. Basically, we have to roll this on, apparently. Boy, does this smell. Very powerful chemicals going on here, I guess. Oh boy, what a mess this is going to be. Oh, that's quite a nice paint, actually. Let's do it nice and thick. Oh, I can't wait to rest this. Rusty, rusty. Now it says rollering it or spraying it give pretty much the same end result, which makes me think it's going to look pretty rough. In a good way, depending on whether you think I meant a lot. I put some masking tape around the end here. Just to try and catch it. Catch it. Remember that?
So really this is hardening not from evaporation like a normal paint but because there's a chemical reaction going on between the hardener and the paint. It's quite interesting. I've never worked with many products like that before. Right, that's gone on in a really thick textured finish. Look at that. I can't wait to see how this turns out, one way or another. Right, let's lay that off a minute. Do the headstock. Again, we've got masking tape around the end there. It's a little bit of Valley's accent you can hear there. Believe it or not, that is English. Tiny bit left. We use this up. I bought a really nice quality roller, but because it's going to go hard, I think this is basically scrap. So you can use this once, and then we'll have to use another one. But I've got a spare one. We'll use up all the paint anyway. Right, we're done. It says to leave that overnight. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna look at it tomorrow. Off you in a second. So that's next day. And that's fully cured now. And I've added a couple of black stripes just with some satin spray. I've just sprayed on the activating acid. You can see that's just starting to turn. So we're going to leave this a while and see what we end up with. At the moment it kind of looks green. Here's the results of the first aciding.
obviously still wood. Rusty wood. Right, let's put it back together. So, what do you think of that? It's quite a big change, isn't it? Now, I know a lot of you would be horrified at the thought that I'm going to do this to those cycle parts, and I completely understand. It's, it's absolute madness. However, now I've seen this, and I'm doubtful myself, don't get me wrong. Now I've seen this with the shiny chrome and the nice bits sort of contrasted against the sort of dry pain of the rust. It's kind of exactly how I saw the bike ending up. And I know it's, I know it's crazy, especially after going to all that effort to polish the engine, polish all the parts, make the brass thing, the powder coating. But anyway, the more beautiful those parts are, all the better the contrast will be when it looks like this. And it'll have the black racing stripes as well. And hopefully, I'm gonna do something clever with the logo and kind of have that ghosted in, in black as well. And you can't change my mind, I'm committed now. Next time you see it, it will look like this. And it's not that I don't like shiny bikes. I love the classics in the shiny colors. But it's just something about having distressed things I really like. I can't explain that. A bit like in the way jeans look better when they're worn in. I like that. I think it's why a lot of people like the Signals bikes as well. Because they're beautiful, but they're kind of, you know, they're muted, aren't they? They're, they're, they're dulled colours, they're very workmanlike, very honest, very honest looking bikes. I mean, this is going to be so honest, it's filthy, but, you know, but it's what I want and it's what's going to happen. So the next time you see it, it's going to be like this. And hopefully on the bike, it's all going to come together and look brilliant. So you can try and put me off, but it won't work. Because I know that this is what's coming. I 
think it'll look even better on the uh, metal and on top of the wood. But it's brilliant. It's so, oh, I just want to lick it. I didn't say that. It's just so, I just love the texture of it. So I can't explain it, obviously mad. So this will be the Reborn Classic 350, but it will be like this. And that's what will happen next. So all the parts, they're all sanded. Sanded way too much. It's probably ready for a gloss coat. But ready to go, might do that now, but you'll see that next time. I really like this. My Royal Enfield Distress Tribute Guitar. My wife's gonna go nuts if I take this home and try and hang it up. I'll keep it here. So there we go. Thanks again for watching. Let me know what you think, but be gentle. <laughs> no, don't worry, honestly, I can take it. You can't change my mind. So, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you want to, or unsubscribe, as I'm sure many of you will. Can't wait. See you soon.